Hey everybody, Adam with Fanic here. Today we are going to have a really fun one. Um, and I say this mainly because normally in my videos, I try to show you guys like the Fanic way and buy the book and, you know, certain strategies that I've learned over the years and like really official ways of programming. Whereas today, um, we're going to do more of like a down and dirty hack. Uh, th this is a, a, a fanic life hack on how to get something done that probably normally shouldn't be done, but you'd be surprised how often it comes in handy. So we're going to have a life hack on making background timers, and we are going to have a lot of fun doing this. So let's dive into it. And uh, yeah, hopefully we learned something fun today. All right. So I'm going to start by creating a uh, program, um, and I'm going to appro appropriately name it uh, Insane, because part of you has to be a little insane to break the, the laws of coding like this, but this is what we're going to do, and before I get into editing it, I want to make sure to go into my detail screen. Uh, this is going to run in BG Logic, the background logic, uh, so to do that, I have to pull out the group mask. No motion is allowed in BG Logic. So just getting that guy all set. Hit end. All right. We have a blank program. Now I'm going to give you a hypothetical situation where one of my customers says, Adam, I have a gripper that is running an output. Maybe it's a vacuum. And I have a monitoring output that if I fail, I want to do a retry, but I need a little delay before the retry. I said, okay, well, it sounds like you need to do condition monitoring in your main program, right? Where as you go to pick and place a part, you do condition monitor. No, for specific reasons, that wouldn't work. I said, okay, well, what if you do parallel task processing, just like my other YouTube video that shows you how to use uh, the run commands, right? Where you can uh, program multiple control where you can run and you can run a program in the background and then put it in an inf infinite loop. And he goes, oh, gosh, no, you know what? That doesn't work also because of blank, blank, blank. I'm keeping it nice and generic. He says, no, he says, I really truthfully need to use BG logic and I need a timer. Well, watch what happens first. I want to show you guys first what happens when you're not using the condition monitor, you're not using run, you're trying to use BG logic and watch what happens. We're going to say if digital input number 10, uh, which might be our error status, let's say 10 is our error status. Uh, if the error status turns on and it becomes active. Now, what he wanted to do is he wanted to wait uh, something like two seconds, like a little debounce here. I want to wait two seconds and then two seconds later, I just want to drop my robot output that that was holding the part. So my robot output one would have already been on. I hit an error status. I want to wait two seconds and turn it off. Super simple program, right? Look how easy that is. Well, watch what happens, guys. Watch this, guys and gals. Watch this. We go set up. We go over to our BG logic. Um, we go to uh, put that in. By the way, I had that in earlier. I was playing. So we got to add our program choice. I want to add insane. And I go to run this program in the background and I hit run. Oh no, I'm fired. I got to sell the new Maserati. Uh, if you look at this guy, we're getting an error in insane on line two that says that we have an invalid item for our mixed logic. Okay, well, let's go poke around and see what line two is that is so upset. Weight statements are not allowed in BG logic. Now you can use your weight statements, of course, in main programs, parallel programs, sub programs, macros, you can use them everywhere else. Sure as heck can't use them in BG logic. 
So it's time to hack this and we're going to make it work. So right off the bat, let's go ahead and delete this, this danger line. That line can't be there. It's not going to do us any good anyway. He gone. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a few lines uh, above this because I'm going to put some more code in. Now here is some magic, my friends. This is super secret stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the secret and then I'm going to write the code without telling you what I'm doing. We're going to have some fun. If you go into your menu, set up and go to your BG logic, you are going to see something at the top of your screen. Now, each robot, depending on your controller, whether it's an R30IB Plus, R30IB, R30IA, it depends what you have, you will have a dedicated scan time for your background logic. Um, now, some of the like R30IBs and R30IAs, this is eight milliseconds per scan. Um, I'm on the latest and greatest, so I'm at four milliseconds per scan. Um, but either way, look at that and understand that I don't care how long your program is. It is going to loop every single four milliseconds. So what that means is if I go into insane, I know that every four milliseconds, boom, 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 this guy is going to execute. Now, watch with me and, and just, just, just think as we do this. A new if statement. Say if. Going to use my same uh, error logic. I'm going to say if 10 equals on. Okay, so there's our error. Insert. Register. I'm going to say register one equals register one plus one. In fact, I'm going to be a good boy and I'm going to note to myself that register one means something very, very special to me. So if we're in error status, do that. Then I'm also going to put in, this is important, I'm going to put in else I'm going to say, uh, oops, sorry, my keyboard else. Bum, 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 bum. Register one will equal zero. Let's insert a couple lines here. If and if. Now, ignore this second half. Let's look at this first half. What did I just do? If our error condition turns on, and, and remember, we're, we're looping. This is a back BG logic. If our error condition comes on, I start counting. And I'm going to start counting, and I'm going to say register 1 equals itself plus 1. So it's going to literally just count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's going to count every single scan. If the error condition goes away, it's going to reset itself. So I've built myself, not a timer, but I've built myself a counter that will count under this condition and reset itself when the condition is lost. So now we can come down here and say, if register Number one, are you guys ready for this? If it is greater than, pick your number. If I say I want to go two seconds, right? Because two seconds would be 2,000 milliseconds. 2,000 milliseconds, I have a four millisecond ITP rate. So 2,000 divided by 4 would be 500 counts. So I'm counting one plus 1 every 4 milliseconds. So that means every 500 counts would be 500 times 4 is 2,000 milliseconds. Yay, we can do math. Okay. So now what I have done effectively is I've built a counter and a conditional 
let's test this. Let me go triple view. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna to go to my IOs. Uh, let's let this one be the digital inputs and I'll be simulating my error condition for DI10. And then down here, I'll say that yes, I'm holding a part. So uh, I've turned on my robot output one, which means I'm holding a box or I'm holding something. Let's go back over here, menu, setup, BG logic. And let's turn this guy on and make sure he runs without errors. Oh, doggy. Insane run. So now let's also put up on the screen the counter and let's see what happens. If the error condition comes on, click, count, 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 reset. Now you can see as long as uh, the counter is the air condition is on, we're counting. But when I turn it off, it resets. So air condition comes on, we start counting, air condition goes off, we stop counting. Let's, let's do this again. Turn that on. And when I turn this on, that should turn off within two seconds when that hits 500. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, there it is, it's off. Now, I personally am not a fan of that thing running and counting to infinity while there's an uh, error condition. And hopefully if there's an error condition, um, uh, it goes away soon. But you can run into an overflow situation. So I'm going to recommend one more thing that we do. We have to go back into our BG logic and stop that from running. Open this up. What I'm going to say is if I get over 5,000, after clearing my um, gripper, I would also like to reset the counter there as well. So I'm going to have the same reset logic here as I have here where I'm just pushing it back to a zero. So we get in a failure condition, we count up to 500, we kill the gripper, and we kill the timer. And that'll keep us from getting into any kind of crazy memory overflow and, and counting to a real big number and making new alarms in our life. So let's go back. Let's test our work. Let's make that run. Yep, she's running. Let's go look at our counter. Our counter is at zero. All right, so let's try this again. Now, when I'm in an error condition, you can see it counts to 500 and then immediately resets itself. So again, let's test it. I'm holding a part. I have an error. The error turns on. Boom, it turns off the gripper and just keeps recounting. Zero to 500, zero to 500, zero to 500. Error goes away. It immediately goes to zero, clears itself. It's ready for the next condition. Holding a part, get an error. No longer holding the part. So what we've done here is we have literally built this nested loop that is self-correcting, self-clearing, and it is monitoring outputs, inputs, and timers, if you want to call it a timer. Um, it's a timer. It is, it is going to execute every four milliseconds on the dot or very, 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 very close to it um, and do your thing. So, you guys, that's... That's the magic. That that's the magic today. This is totally a life hack. This is this is something that I I probably would have never done if someone didn't ask me to do it. Like it, it was one of those workarounds that just presented itself, and I thought it was cool as ever. So hey, that's why you guys subscribe and follow, right? You subscribe to me, you learn these tricks, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Keep the the comments and shares and likes and subscriptions coming. It helps me out a lot. And uh, hey, as always. Have fun coding.